robust healthcare reform. So what kind of impact is uh, healthcare reform going to have on UH's development efforts? Well, you know, if I knew, I'd be happy to tell you. Uh, this is probably the most uncertain time that any of us have ever worked in healthcare in our careers. Uh, the legislation that was passed, even if it proceeds, as you know, I think you all know that there's a, probably going to be a Supreme Court hearing about whether or not um, healthcare legislation you know, changes that were recently passed uh, will indeed occur or not. Even if it does pass, a thousand times in the legislation since the Secretary of Health and Human Services shown the sign. So there is still a tremendous amount of uncertainty in this regard. There are a few things, though, that I can tell you that we need to think about as an industry. First and foremost, we will be more accountable than ever. And when I say accountable, it's not just accountable for episodic types of care. So within our health system, we can take care of literally any problem that someone presents with anywhere within our health system. But we need to think more about just the acute care component of what happens in health care today. So I'm talking about this not just as you wish, but as an industry. So we need to make sure that we are going to be focusing on the continuum of care that we're providing to our patients. As I remind many people though, within our system, every day the largest number of people that we take care of sleep in their own beds at night. And our home care department has about 2,000 patients that we take care of every day. In our hospitals, we have an average daily well, we have licensed bed capacity of about maybe 17 or 1,800. So we're seeing a dramatic shift. In fact, if you go back to 1980 versus 2010, in 1980, about 40% of the spend in healthcare was spent in hospitals. Today, it's about 30%. So we're actually seeing inpatient care beginning to decline. It has been uh, uh, rather over the years. And ambulatory services are continuing to, uh, to continue to grow and develop. So we're at risk in terms of we need to make sure that we're going to be focusing on the total health needs of the patients concerned. Uh, more accountable and more transparent. We need to make sure that we're going to be providing you as potential patients or interested members of the public what can you depend on us to do when you come to us for care? Most people depend on more referrals from their hairdressers and barbers than they do from their family practice physicians or primary care physicians. I think we need to become better shoppers for the work uh, that will uh, be done to us or for the services or, or procedures that will be performed on us. So we need to be much more transparent as an industry as well and publish our data because there is appropriate benchmark data that is out there that we should be comparing ourselves against. And then lastly, I will just mention we take a look at what's happening on a national basis. Hospitals now are, for the first time, and frankly, I think it's a very good move, hospitals will now be paid less on the basis of volume and more on the basis of value. So, for example, we're about to move into something called value-based purchasing. And what that means is that 70% of our payment to Medicare patients will be based on clinical outcomes in particular diagnoses. If hospitals don't meet those particular baseline or threshold levels, they will see a significant reduction in payment for the services that are being provided. And about 30% of that payment will be on the basis of the patient experience. So did you communicate well with your physicians? Did you communicate well with your nurses? Was the room clean? Did you uh, get the kinds of services that you were expecting? And if hospitals don't meet certain threshold guidelines in that particular category, there's a reduction or diminution in payment as well. But frankly, I think it's all quite good. But to your question about us, uh, I'm very pleased to say that when we took a look at at least the metrics that have been advanced, we're well above uh, those numbers, so we probably won't have any impact on our organization. But again, it's too soon to tell. We still have uh, some issues to deal with. As you know, August 2nd, there will be a lot of discussions regarding the debt ceiling, whether or not that will be raised. We're going to have to think hard about what might happen to the Medicare and Medicaid program in that regard. So August 2nd for us is an important date as well. But as I said, even in the past, 